Protein allergy and lactose intolerance are often confused as being the same thing, but really they're two different entities. A milk protein allergy occurs in a patient where the immune system inappropriately overreacts or attacks the milk proteins, which are known as casein and whey. In this case, the body then initiates an immune response and an allergic reaction forms. The lactose intolerance differs from milk protein allergy in that lactose intolerance means that the patient lacks the enzyme lactase, which is present in the small intestine, needed to break down the milk sugar lactose into the usable forms of energy, glucose and galactose. The symptoms of milk protein allergy include things like fussiness, irritability, abdominal pain, refusal to eat, loose stool, and bloody stool. Whereas symptoms of lactose intolerance include things like abdominal pain, cramping, gas, bloating, and diarrhea. With a milk protein allergy, uh, you focus more on the actual proteins, such as casein and whey, and all of these proteins need to be taken out of the diet. And when you uh, think about lactose intolerance, lactose is the sugar that's naturally found in dairy products, and so that sugar needs to be taken out of the diet. So, you know, they really are very different. So, you know, for example, with butter, butter is very, very low in lactose, but it does have those milk proteins in it. So those with milk protein allergies will have to avoid butter uh, always, and then those with lactose intolerance will likely be able to tolerate butter. With a milk protein allergy, the patient truly does need to avoid the milk proteins and so therefore milk products in the diet. If the mother is breastfeeding, for example, the mother should completely eliminate all forms of milk product in her diet and patients should typically have improvement in their symptoms two weeks after she has done that. With milk protein allergies, um, the recommendation is to just completely avoid milk protein. With lactose intolerance, it's a bit more case by case just because you know some of those kids will have no enzymes, lactase enzymes, and then some will have a few. And so, you know, it will depend on how much they can actually tolerate in terms of, you know, dairy. So some of these kids who don't have a lot of enzymes, you know, might not be able to tolerate any dairy, and then others can maybe have, you know, a serving a day with, with enzyme replacement. But what I find so unique about the CADC is that they have a multidisciplinary approach to everything. So for us, we have physicians, we have registered dietitians, we have nurses, Nurses and patient navigators, social workers, so we really have the entire team there to um, provide the support that the patient might need. So, for example, if you have someone who is lactose intolerant, uh, the doctor would make the diagnosis, you know, the registered dietitian would go in to provide, um, you know, any sort of information on lactose-free diet, and then maybe our patient navigator would help uh, the patient when they go back to school to ensure that they're able to have a lactose-free meal, you know, for school lunch. So it really is very comprehensive, and, you know, we always will make sure that we have everything covered.